This podcast is brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast. Robots Radio. Games. Lore. Stories. Community. Just press play. Welcome to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. The podcast where we explore the amazing universe of the Elder Scrolls. Adventurers, welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. This is your host, Tom, or Robots, and I'm here, as usual, with my good buddy, Lotus of Doom. Lotus... I know we've been talking about the uh, Daedric Princes. We've been revisiting the Daedric Princes in more detail lately. Mm -hmm. But I thought maybe on this episode, we'd kind of do something else for just a change. Down for down for kind of turning this sideways a little bit. I was thinking mix it up a little. Maybe we would talk about all of the natural wildlife of High Isle. Perfect. I'm sure everyone would really enjoy that. Yeah. So what are you talking about? The high life, the high aisle, all of these things. And how dare you mention other Daedric princes? There are no other Daedric princes. Only one. The Daedric Prince of Madness at your service, gents. And don't make me use the Wabajack or you'll both be chickens clucking to the rest of this. Oh, my God. Uh, Lotus, did Cheo Gorith just jump into our chat? I mean, I... I think for a misdirection, maybe we should just skip to S and go with Shea Gorath instead. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was the voice of a Mr. Wes Johnson. <laughs> Hello there, gentlemen. Wes, thank you so much for joining us for today's episode. Or should I call you Shea Gorath? I don't know what you prefer to be called, but... Well, you can call me Wes, or you can call me Shale, or Lucian, or you can call me uh, uh, any random Imperial Guard's name. I don't know what their name would be. Stan. <laughs> Stan. I don't know. <laughs> the guard good. outside the Imperial City who we've heard say the same lines over and over and over again because we play I these games for hours. The guard, <laughs> and you are a fork thief. <laughs> halt, fork thief. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us to, today for our episode. Um, man, w- you and I have honor. talked previously obviously a little bit and of course we love what you do with the games this episode is very special though because you have a a very special cause that this is this Mm. is actually the first day of a series of streams and other things that are going to be going on would you like to share a little bit about that we are doing a thing at, at the cons. I usually do a panel called Voice of Palooza, and it's a lot of fun. We basically get tons of voice artists and we we do lines from movies or TV shows or we take uh, songs or lyrics and we use the character voices to bring them to life in a different way. And we we take suggestions, you know, we take suggestions like someone will toss in a random line. Um, like I would look over here and uh, I would say, see that Inquisitor Hammond has said, uh, does Mr. West like pineapple on pizza? And we would bring it to life in a different character voice. And and yes, I do, by the way. But, uh, you know, you, you uh, basically it's a fun kind of pan. Well, we have repurposed it and we are turning Voice of Palooza into an umbrella event which is going to bring together playthroughs, uh, new plays, uh, conversations like this, and indeed a Voice of Palooza Prime panel to finish it all out between the 17th and the 26th. That's starting tomorrow and going through Sunday the 26th. Hundreds of gamers will be streaming around the world. This is a global effort to fight Alzheimer's disease. Uh, Very personal reasons for me. I lost my mother and my grandmother to Alzheimer's and uncle, other family, friends and uh, relatives who have had to suffer through this. And as we've reached out and talked to people with our end ALZ efforts, we've discovered that it's touched so many other families. So people are, are gathering funds via fun over these next several days and we've gotten folks wonderful folks like you we've gotten other streamers around the globe we've gotten voice actors who have come out of the woodwork to help us with this uh we're going to be having a like 
we did just today richard epcar has agreed to join us uh who does joker john st john duke newcomb will be joining us we've got uh, john patrick lowry the sniper from team fortress 2 ellen mclean glados will be there uh we've got paul edding we've got uh, uh uh jeff baker who is my haskell uh uh-huh. is going to be uh joining us we have if you go to voice com, you'll see this huge long list of all the voice actors who have agreed to join us matt Matthew Mercer is going to join us. Great voice actor. You know him as McCready. He's been in Overwatch. He does critical role. Uh, everyone just being basically saying, yeah, Wes, we believe in the cause and we're going to be there. So we're going to be doing entertainment over the next week. And we're just asking folks to donate whatever little they can. If even if it's the amount of a cup of coffee mm-hmm. just to help somebody, because, you know, they're there are going to be uh, 55 million people in the next few years in America alone or all around the world who suffer from Alzheimer's disease. And that's not counting the caretakers, the free caretakers, the people who live with them, the lives that this touches. And it's been devastating to lose people that you love before you even lose them. So if you can give a little tiny bit, we would be grateful. It all adds up and it's going to be helping some people in real need. And uh, so that's the whole idea behind Voice of Palooza. That's awesome. Such a such a wonderful cause. And you're putting the fun in fundraising. I love that. Um, And and, uh, Kenny Vigu, Kenneth uh Vigu, by the way, from Fallout for Hope, has been arranging and putting this together and helping. Without him, none of this would be possible. And the folks over at the uh, Alzheimer's Association National Capital Region with Cindy and uh, Carrie, uh, a lot of people working behind the scenes for a long time tirelessly to make this happen. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I and I can relate to some of this. My my grandmother died of dementia. It wasn't Alzheimer's dementia specific. Is, but dementia was, and Alzheimer's mm-hmm. are a, a thing together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we, uh, as a as a young teenager, went through that and watched her forget who I was and 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 went through all of the all that's of the so hard. Uh, yeah, all of the difficulty of all of that. Another fun another fun point. My wife uh, runs a research lab at a university, and they much of their research is in trying to solve Alzheimer's through. Oh, uh, awesome. through, that's wonderful. Yeah, through a uh, experiment with mice. They're looking at the way that they can. This is a really cool thing. I don't talk about this personal stuff very much on the show. She yeah. is part of a lab and what, what they do is they create what are called mouse models, genetically engineered mice that exhibit the same kinds of things that human brains do so they can study those things in the mouse brains before they move it to human trials. So this is a scientific thing, mouse models. It's not like a mouse <laughs> that other mice look at him and go, Rrr. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could dress them up, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so this is something that I'm, you know, intimately connected to in a few different ways as well. And I think it's such a wonderful cause. So a voice of Palooza.com. Is that correct? The the website voice of Palooza.com. You can go there. If it tells you like, Oh, do you really trust this? Yes, you can trust it. Go on in, jump in there, take a look at it. Look at the long line of all the voice actors who are going to be there. Take a look at the uh, list of events in our main stage. And that's only the tip of the iceberg on my, uh, Twitter page, uh, uh, whether you're going on Twitter to Fallout for Hope at Fallout for Hope or mine, which is at West Johnson Voice, we are trying to retweet all the events that everyone is telling us about so that we can get the word out. I think there's just so much happening. And the thing that really gets to me is the misconception of gamers as not caring. Oh, yeah. There's oh, all yeah. people think that gamers are apathetic and just, you know, sitting around playing their games. They don't care about anything. There's a real stereotype there and that there's a toxic edge to the whole thing. And you know what? Some of the, the, the best people I have ever met, the kindest, most giving, most activated people I've ever met have been gamers. And watching what this community is doing right now is... Uh, I, I don't even have words and I don't want to cry on you here, but it really has. Uh, I'm in awe of every one of them. Yeah. I, every time um, we do this and, and I've worked with Ken on some of these other projects, Fault for Hope and those kinds of things. It really is amazing. The outpouring of the community. Also, you know, that jazz music's going to send us all to hell. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just another instance of that, right? Like a generation right. that hasn't figured out that like this stuff isn't bad. It's just right. another thing we enjoy as human beings. And if your generation or your cultural group or whatever doesn't get it, then you don't need to poo poo on it. You know, right. Well, everybody poo poos what they don't understand. 
And uh, exactly. You know, and and, yeah. and look at here. Here's the thing. We were going to have uh, Grandma Shirley, uh, Skyrim Grandma Shirley, was going to join us in some things, but she has to go to a wedding now, unfortunately. Oh. So we won't, we're going to work with her at a later date. But she's 83 years old and she's out there going hardcore yeah. man, streaming. It, it isn't anything to do with age. It has to do with your mental mm -hmm. disposition, you know, and you can enjoy so many things. I love all kinds of music throughout the age. I, I have a channel on my dial where I'll listen to something heavy or something light. I'll listen to the 1940s. Depends upon my mood. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Uh, there are so many flavors and tastes in this world that if you don't sample a little bit, bit then you're missing out absolutely yeah you're missing out and um tomorrow night so that would be friday for those of you listening on the audio not here for the live show tomorrow night friday at 5 p.m eastern uh, i'll be seeing you again yeah. because we're doing a uh, we're, we're going to be playing fallout 4 and talking with you and a number of other voice actors who yeah. have very cool roles in fallout 4 about about that experience as well so lots of fun How stuff cool to is tune that? Into. all the people who are going to be with us there is amazing we even got uh, i mean peter jessup's going to be there stephen russell if he wanted to hang out and chat and ask questions of uh nick valentine mm -hmm. uh paul edding's going to be there danny shirago who plays hancock yeah he, he and i Dan have a running joke where every time i get to talk to him i the first time we met i called him um He's Hancock. I called him Hamilton. It like slipped oh because of, because of the because of the famous play and everything. That was just the word that nice, popped in my head. Yeah. Right? It was transposed. Um, and so, so from, every, from this point on, he's just Hamilton now. Hamilton. That, well, Jan John, you you met Jan Johns yet? I don't think I have. No. You're gonna love no. Jan Johns. I mean, she was Scribe Halen. She was uh, Ellie Perkins, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 also Sierra with the in the nuka cola world yeah uh, john gentry is going to be there yeah preston garvey and i swear to god he's going to ask you to go check in on another settlement of course of course he is <laughs> and, of course he is and and we we just found out that uh, christopher walker is going to be there as well okay uh, who is uh, uh initiate clark so he's he's cool. decided he, he would like to join us as well so we're going to we're going to have a full house and uh, we're going to be going through the wasteland. I will bring my uh, Mo Cronin bat. We're going to bring a swatter. I'm going to swing some hefty hickory. It's going to be great. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, here, let's let's transition back to Elder Scrolls stuff because we've. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. We're back. <laughs> So we've got we've got questions for you, and I, I have to I have to bridge the gap here because with Lotus on the this direction, camera's opposite. Lotus, yeah, the camera's around. on the show. <laughs> Just point in a random direction, and you'll probably get to with me. Lotus over yeah, there. See, there you go. Um, <laughs> Up there, uh, <laughs> he's obviously his favorite Daedric Prince, Hermaeus Mora. Most ah. people know you for Shio Gorath because he's just so in everyone's face all the time. But Hermaeus Mora had an entire expansion for Skyrim. He's such yes. a cool character. You know, in fact, you've been you've been the key Daedric Prince on two different expansions for Elder Scrolls games, which is pretty awesome. Um, so let's let's start with some Hermes Mora stuff. I was Mora also stuff. Dagon back in Morrowind, I believe. Was I Maroon's Dagon? I think uh, so. Maybe, maybe. I think we've really? we've covered I, I, this stuff a few times. So the, when we go over the princes, we often actually note the voice actors. The amount of uh, influence you have on this series is is kind of actually a, a bit legendary, just simply from so many characters, whether they're like you, we had talked about pre-show with the Oblivion Guard, even like and stuff oh, yeah. like that. Where I it's love just the like, guard. It, mm -hmm. It's and the guard itself is its own meme on the Internet of people just being so entertained by just the oblivion guards it's amazing and the people who want me to come up to them and go halt criminal scum yeah, exactly. no gets worth that in my city your stolen goods are now forfeit i love i love that um you went to some event recently dressed up as Shio awesome, con. awesome, awesome con awesome yeah. con and i saw all the pictures on twitter and then and then this is a funny we story during the epic photo shoot and i said i'll if you want i'll come full shea gorath and the people at epic photos were like uh okay so uh <laughs> but so, my staff of shea gorath got broken oh no really it got broken so if anybody out there has some netches and a couple of heartstones, <laughs> i can really use them right now jeez oh, no. so so the funny thing i noticed about this is right at about the same time or just maybe a week after i saw all of your posts about being at awesome con and all these cool pictures with you with fans and stuff i started to notice a trend on reddit where people were like i ran into shio gorath at the grocery store or 
I don't know if maybe when you went to Awesome Con, you also stopped by some other places, but and got people snap some shots with you. I don't know if this is something you're aware of, but it, it uh, was a thing on Reddit for like a week. There was actually, I think what that was, was uh, I went to, uh, I wasn't dressed as Shea Gorak. No, you were dressed as yourself, but yeah, people but still it recognized was, uh, it was you. At a high school, it was at a high school thing. We give out an award every year yes. for the George Robert Allen Memorial Award. He was my old drama teacher. And I showed up there in front of the school and give this award out for acting and tech and while i was up there i was basically telling every one of them you can be anything you want to be if i wes johnson from this high school could end up becoming a daedric prince of madness well then you can be anything you want and i went through this whole thing and a couple of the kids come up at the end and they're like hey man can we you know they want to talk get a picture i'm like sure absolutely and next thing you know it's on reddit so be that's careful. My, yeah that, that was because <laughs> they were like teenagers uh, taking these pictures with you like i ran always be good. nice she came to my nice high school thing. I ran into Shea Gorth and he was very nice. Or I ran into Shea Gorth and what a douche nozzle. Yeah. So, what a douche. My entrails are now outside my body. Yeah. Be very careful. Very they, careful. They've been jump roped on. Um, right. So let's get back to uh, Her Hermamora. Hermamora yeah. and the the expansion doing Hermamora. We, we, we'll, we're definitely going to talk Shea Gorth on the second half of the show. Okay. What, what is it like getting into the mind of a Cthulhu esque? squid blob monster like remember when i first did this character back in the early games he, all you saw was a purple glow yeah right you, you never really saw that he had all these eyeballs and 10 million tentacles that he'd be the worst party guest ever because he's constantly double dipping with all the tentacles and every one of the dips and yeah, uh, touching everybody eyes yeah i mean well just all he is is just sitting back in a corner with 10 million eyes staring at you all all night it's a little creepy but uh he was he was kind of fun and interesting uh, a weird voice i was just told you know it's very chalutu he's got we don't know what he's going to end up looking like so i tried to think of a way to develop this voice my tongue is sideways in my mouth i use the internal cavern of the mouth he slows he clicks uh yeah um, for Miss Mora has a stranger kind of delivery. And people are always saying, the funny thing is, is people ask me about Hermes Mora and about the Protectron robots in Fallout in particular, how much of that is processing with the delivery? And it's yeah. not. Oh, it's really? Not really? Processing. I deliver those, you know, the protectron robots are me and the way i speak and throwing those things around so that when they all they do is throw a little electronic on it and it makes it sound the way it does so there's not as much as you would think on each of those uh characters and hermaeus mora has just a little bit of an echoey kind of uh effect on him but it's mostly me and uh working with mark uh lampert over at uh, bethesda has been wonderful for me he's the guy who uh first initially told me hey this one character lucian seems a little darker let's try him a little different and he was the first of the characters at bethesda who broke the race mold in oblivion everybody oh. else kind of sounded the same but lucian did not right lucian very sounded unique. different yeah he was very unique amongst the other characters so it helped him to stand out and that was because mark wanted me to go somewhere with him and i did mark mark can lead me anywhere i'll go anywhere he wishes me to go yeah man that's that's great that it's so cool to hear the behind the scenes stuff and sorry about the dogs barking in the background um the, what kind of dogs uh there's uh i've got a shih tzu and a shih tzu yorkie mix and Excellent. the shih tzu yes. is like in love with the neighbor dog so every time the neighbor dog <laughs> what comes is outside, the neighbor dog uh, I don't even know. I don't even know what kind of dog. It's, it would be it's bigger. great if it was like a, a you know Saint Bernard or something. <laughs> so Bull mastiff. Your, your dog, yeah, a <laughs> right? mastiff. That your dog would have to get like a, a step ladder and uh, take yeah. care of business. Yeah, he'd have to climb all the way up in order to get in anywhere. Um, anyway, I don't even know how you'd mix those names? <laughs> a bullshoe. Bullshoe. Perfect. <laughs> That's probably it. Um. 
So <laughs> going back to Hermes Mora. So uh, when you're when you're doing the voice, and that, that's always one of the questions that we, in fact, we've talked about that before. Some of these voices, like how much of it is the voice actor, how much of it is post processing, all of that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Um, because you, you can tell on some of them, there's definitely something like an echo, right? Doing yeah, the actual yeah. <laughs> echo is it'd be really you, hard to do Mark, with your voice. When Mark Lampert does the sound for some of these things, it's amazing. He, he like rad roaches when he put together rad roaches and he has like 14 different pop click sounds in there that will haunt your nightmares Uh if you hear this coming around a corner he he loves to go out to nature and listen to things and then take sounds and mix and match he's he is really an artist he really truly is that's awesome that's awesome yeah i've 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 played in bands i've been in around sound production and video production worked with marketing teams and things like that but getting into things on that level sounds really cool like, your real mad scientist stuff yeah 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 <laughs> sounds really really cool lotus did you have any questions about Hermamora? so again we, we've already touched on the fact that Hermamora is you know long been like the joke of like any show that i'm on where it's just that's been my favorite it, it not only just my favorite katie prince let like it's a very unique character to the series uh, kind of like separate from anything else so hearing how you voiced mora is is really interesting um but one of the things i I was curious on just based on one of the things you mentioned that there was a lot of clicking there's a lot of like Mm -hmm. uh, cavernous like you're going for like a hollow type of sound was that direction given to you because they said they you had mentioned there wasn't really like a concrete idea of what Mora was going to be did you base that on something or was it just kind of like one of those things that it's just like this felt right and it almost kind of the character developed around the voice like was, yeah. was one necessarily well, before it the just other felt right no i mean it just sort of felt right and in a lot of instances i don't see what the character is going to end up looking like sure. before i voice it it's all just concept so you know Chalu- 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 which is a hard word and oh, yeah, uh, awful. Uh, yeah. uh you know that whole thing that whole world immediately it brings you into sort of a nightmare scenario mm-hmm. and that he's uh you know this land netherland that you go Go to that's far away and feels very ethereal and it's filled with books and has sort of an mc escher kind of feel to it mm-hmm. i just felt i got the idea that hermaeus mora would be more of a since he's a reader and a studier he's in no hurry yeah he's in no hurry he knows he's got you not only does he know he's got you he has unskippable dialogue which I find hilarious because I he's a slow talker <laughs> and they're in a world, in a world of, of like, we need it now fast, fast, fast computer, boom, 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 satisfaction that you have to stop and listen to her. Mora. I know there are people who feel like their leg is caught in a bear trap and they can't get out. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. He, his realm has kind of a timelessness to it also. Like it's, yeah. it's very like, obviously all the Daedric princes have realms of oblivion. They're all weird in some way, but his is like, it's I mean, I remember playing through the expansion of Skyrim and getting into there and you get sucked in through the book and then you feel mm-hmm. like you're in a, like is where is, can I get out? Like, what is this? Right. Well, uh, you know, on that, that's like one of the things because it's one of those uh, things when you think about it, you almost wonder, are, am I transposing, you know, what I already know into the thing? Like it's like hindsight 2020 right. thing or is like that actually there because based on what you said when you were describing it i was like oh this totally makes sense because we've we've joked about the different forms of like how the series has progressed and stuff like that where things are similar but they 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 definitely change a little bit at a time hermaeus more is one of the older daedric princes in the grand scheme of being daedric princes where you know there's potential that he's transcended kalpas and stuff like that but um just based on the reason i asked about the the dialogue what with him not really having a corporeal form in skyrim Mm -hmm. and eso the hollowness kind of makes sense because there wouldn't really be anything to contain and that that. was the echoey all i knew is he was this this purple kind of ethereal fog and that's what we originally did the voice with and knowing that there's something creepy crawly behind it sure uh, is is a way to go with that as if he's talking to you from beyond a realm into your realm Mm -hmm. and if you'll notice we kept a lot of that in the uh uh the the dragonborn expansion oh yeah like however apocrypha yeah yeah but he's he is much more direct at times yes than he is when you're talking to him through the void sure um 
And the the other part of that, which I, I find interesting because it's a form of the character design that's kind of been phased out more, but it was uh, around before, was the original, we, we kind of don't have a good descriptor for it, so we just call it the lobster potato version of Hermaeus Moore <laughs> from like uh, Where from Oblivion. Yeah, he's which, like a combination of uh, Zoidberg and right. a Cthulhu yeah. monster, right? But like, why not Hermaeus Mora? Right, that clicking sound you mentioned totally makes sense because they, if you look at the old model from Daggerfall or Oblivion, right, there are literal pinchers that look like they should be having like a clicking thing as it's just kind of, even if you look at the old GIF on the UESP, it has like a little twitchy clicking thing going on. There's so, also, if you look around the bottom of the eyes, there's sort of this weird, almost Zoidberg kind of holy weird <laughs> mouthy yes. thing where I felt some of the clicking is probably coming from that just as he speaks. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. You know, and, and, uh, you know what's interesting is when you don't know sometimes they've already developed a lot of this stuff by the time they bring in a voice actor voice actors come in towards the very end you have developers that come up with ideas and they have sometimes they'll throw in the lines and then they bring in this uh, voice actor who's sometimes about as weird as i am who (laughs) get these ideas and inhabit them and take them into a different place and um like say with shea gorath at first uh, when Todd first heard what I'd come up with for Shea Gorath, they weren't quite sure. But the more they listened to it, the more they liked it and the more it stuck because he wasn't supposed to be uh, a mixture of Irish and Scottish. That was something I brought to it. <laughs> yeah. I brought Scott for the angry and the Irish for the manic, uh, for the manic and the dementia. And uh, and then also there's nothing whatsoever, just pure, straight malevolence. When he gets really down to it, there's no accent whatsoever. And why is that? Because it's all affectation. He does what he wishes. Right. And so I, you know, they had initially come to me and said, we'd love to get uh, a Robin Williams type, a stand-up guy who we don't know whether he's going to uh, love you or, or destroy you. We want there to be like an uneasiness. And so coming up with the dual accent and the dual attitude, and also as I'm going between the lines, letting my attitude just run like hot mercury over a skillet to wherever it wants to go i felt that would throw off whoever's playing and so i let i let her may or excuse me i let shea gorath roam in my mind from one emotion to the next to gentle to mad to crazy to entreating towards you let him have charisma but let him also be like just completely dangerous so when i got to the scottish i thought who's a good stand-up comedian and i wasn't thinking scottish at first i just wanted to think they said said stand-up and i thought okay well who's a stand-up who's kind of dangerous and i know there's people like bobby slayton there's this there's that but then i stuck on the idea of billy Connolly who Billy Connolly, I think, is incredibly funny, incredibly intelligent, and he has this air of danger about him uh, where you don't know. You th- you want to be with him. You want to be pals with him. But you get a feeling that if you've had a drink or two with him, you could be in trouble. <laughs> so I thought that's a great place for one side of it. Then I had a guy from the Irish channel. His name is Tom Stack. He was a wonderful fella. And he had a very Irish smooth accent. So I, t- I, d- I took some of the stuff from him for the other side of him and then just tossed them into Ginsu pan and let them let them mix and match, which is very confusing to anybody who's from Scotland or Ireland wondering where the hell I'm from. But that's the point. <laughs> right. Gorth is right. from nowhere. He's right. from nowhere. It's like on and the verge so, of uh, being multiple personalities. Yeah. But they gave me a whole week to think about this one, which you don't normally get in a video game. You come in and you usually it's like, let's go. Mm-hmm. And in this instance, I had a week to think this over and to com- you know, co- consider it and go through it. So I had almost fully formed who this guy was in my mind, having like one page of dialogue only to work with and play by the time I got into the studio and I disappeared into him completely. And when I was in the studio, it was just like this all black around me with a little light on the other side with an engineer who could look through and, and I have a conversation with him, but I went somewhere else. And the best characters are when you go somewhere else and you live completely in them. And uh, that's why I feel so close to some of these characters. I feel like, you know, they're, they're, they're your babies. And people yeah. say, what's your favorite character? What's your favorite role? That totally is a Sophie's choice. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's tough. Well, you know what? We've got so much more to talk to you about these characters with, but we have to take a quick break. Thank our patrons. And mm. uh, you said you said you'd be happy to read out one of the reviews. So, yes, we're going to transition over to that. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The skies are marked with numberless sparks. 
each a fire and every one a sign. All right, so we're in the middle of the show. This is where we get to thank our patrons, and we need to shout out some new patrons that signed up just this last week. We have Megan S., Acaligus, and Cat MG. Thank you so much for signing up on the Patreon. You guys are amazing. And all 100. We're at a solid Lotus, a solid exact 100. Nice triple digit. Triple digits. And we have to call out our Daedric Prince tier patrons. Mr. Gami Boy, Kira C, Noodle Al, Noodle Al Dente. Not Nude Al Dente. That's a very different thing. <laughs> and very River, different Al Dente. <laughs> Riverwood Chicken. Uh, thank you to all of you guys. We're not going to take a long time during this part. You know how this stuff is. Patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast if you want to check out all the different tiers and things that you can get. Our, um, Patreon episode is scheduled for two weeks from today as we're getting closer to the end of the month. So have some conversations in the discord about what you guys want to talk about. Um, but we also have a review on Apple podcasts and I hear uh, Hermaeus Mora might want to take a stab at this one. This is the title of this review. <laughs> Hermes Mora would listen to this show this podcast deserves to be shouted off the throat of the world for all to hear oh we could be here all night let me get a faster character the hosts make the long and rather confusing elder scrolls lore easy to understand as a long-time fan myself, I always end up finding something new when listening to this show. So, uh, you know, if you're going to be traveling the plains of oblivion, I don't know what that is, but you stick a swatter. Traveling one of the many paths of just, you know, drinking some skooma. Give this podcast a listen to. <laughs> thank you so much. And this is from Hasselhoff. Um, thank that you was, for putting in the review that for that. that See, and that's why you should give us reviews, because maybe they'll be read in the best form possible. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You never know. But uh, thank you to everybody who takes time to leave ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts and ratings on Spotify. It absolutely helps us out a ton. All right. We're not going to do the middle of the show anymore because we got more stuff to talk with Wes about. And this transition is going to be super awkward. Yes, yes, you're entirely brilliant. Conquering madness and all that. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you're on the show like every week <laughs> wow wow i know that guy i was gonna say that didn't dawn on me on how weird that was gonna be until you played it I'm like, oh, this is weird <laughs> it, it was like a shower thought i was i was taking a shower today and i was you know doing the shampoo and i was like wait a minute wes is gonna be on the show tonight and we have his voice already on the show that's weird um <laughs> So, uh, Wes, you were talking about, like, you know, uh, these characters are your babies and really yeah. getting into them. Um, and uh, I know we can't ask you anything about Elder Scrolls Six. I'm sure there's all sorts of I stuff. I don't know. I literally don't know. That you Eventually, you'll be brought in on that. I would love to see more from, Moshe Agora, from your, Hermes, from more your mouth to the gaming god's ears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that that turns into a thing. Um, but. In the meantime, we still have these characters that you've played in, in all of these other things. And you talk about Shia Gorath with the whole, it's almost like multiple personalities that, that he's constantly shifting. And in the in the 10 years since Skyrim, I feel like there's everybody tends to side more with the, oh, he's funny because nothing too bad happens to your character. But yeah. when you played those games, he's horrifying. <laughs> You yes. don't know what's going to happen to you. And that's the, that's the point of it. I The writers of this character have been wonderful. I mean, uh, Emil Pagliarolo, Mark Nelson, uh, uh, you've got uh, Fred Zeleny. You've got all these guys who have written over the years uh, lines for Shea Gorath. And they're just a delight to read and to bring to life, you know. Um, but I, I really feel that that's the one thing about Shea Gorath that people are skipping there thinking about the cuddly part of him. Yeah, the cheese the jokes part. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Don't hug him too hard because he is a poison tipped porcupine mm -hmm. and uh, you may you may go down. It's a little frightening and he'll draw you in with a smile and a little bit of charm. And the next thing you know, zap, you're out over suicide hill because you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so that's actually like, I'm really glad you brought that up specifically just because it's one of the things that I feel um, 
kind of shows the difference between like the the jokey meme worthy uh you know a, a recent interpretation that the series has had is the skooma cat from ESO and stuff like that all the different versions of him or whatever and so many people really kind of like the jovial side and that's fine and all but the thing that i always loved about shia Gorath is is that kind of twisted dark version that is almost it's almost like Shia Gorath himself hides it a lot oh, yeah. so that people yeah. are lured into, Oh yeah, no, this is fine. This is, this will work out advantageously for me, or I can help along with this. How bad could this be? And it's the erratic nature that Shia Gorath has that I think makes him so disturbing as a character because it flips on a dime. And mm-hmm. a lot of it is done with literal randomness where it's just like the concept of randomness itself is actually kind of terrifying because you can't account for it. It's funny watching it from the outside, as you said, when it happens to somebody else. But if you were to find yourself uh, with a person who is as uh, random, as uh, spontaneously crazy, as narcissistic and as uh, borderline dangerous as Shea Gorath on a daily basis, you're going to be exhausted. You're going to be you're going to be uh, you're going to be feeling uh, shell shock all the time because you don't know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Shea Gorath is okay to deal with in a small dose. I feel bad for Haskell. Yeah, this is where I'm going. Like, this is exactly where I was where I was going with it. Talk about your toxic work environment. Oh, my God. And that's part of why he's so scary is because when you if, if you play Skyrim and that's your first Elder Scrolls game and you like before you I, I, I may not be remembering this correctly, but before you actually get to meet Shea Gorath, you talk with Haskell. I believe. Mm-hmm. And ha- yes, he and- meets you in the, the foyer. Right. Yeah, because right. the butterflies unveil what you're actually going into in the Shivering Isles. Right. And there's he this is, there's this thing where basically the Robert Duvall consigliere <laughs> yeah. character who is very calm and very business like before you meet the Godfather. But make no mistake about it. The consigliere is dangerous as well. Right. But it's it's like he's the kind of character who needs that. He needs a Haskell to do mm-hmm. things for him because because it like the steadiness of Haskell in contrast to the chaos of Shea Gorath, like makes it even even more stark what i love is if you listen to uh if you're playing uh, morrowind and you go by the uh the the statue and you talk to shea gorath you'll notice he doesn't sound like the shea gorath you're used to and i'll tell you why that is because that shea gorath is played by jeff baker which means as far as i'm concerned Shea Gorath is off in the mind of a dead emperor somewhere, and he left Haskell behind to work as an answering machine, and he's doing his best impression of Shea Gorath because <laughs> you don't actually see him. You only get him on the phone. It's like somebody <laughs> calling awesome. up. It's like when, you're, when your teacher calls up and wants to talk to you, and it's like, yes, I am the father. What can I do for you today? <laughs> I am Mr. Johnson. Thank you for calling. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. that fits By so the way. Well. By the way, somebody just uh, Ben's message in chat. Are you the question about improv? Somebody just sent something to me and tried to reach out to me. And uh, I when I picked up the phone to do that little bit, it actually dialed somebody. So somebody (laughs) on the other end just heard, yes, I am the father. (laughs) Oh, that's great. That's great. I thought thought you noticed the chat (laughs) because I think that's a great question. Somebody out there is going, somebody called up and said they were my daddy. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) Somebody's called called for sending me my dad. Um, In this question, I want to point out Ben of Tamaria in chat says, is there any improv involved? Like you were talking about coming up with the character, but when you're actually voicing the lines, how how closely do you stick to what's written? Uh, you stick very close to what's written for the most part. Uh, the improvisation sometimes comes in the breaths, comes in the pauses, comes in the attitude. Uh, and there are times that I've actually thrown a little line here and there uh, that they've liked and gone with. But I don't play with the developer's lines. They have an idea of what they're doing and what where the story's going. And in a lot of instances, I don't know right away. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So you just yeah. add your flair to what is there. Yeah. Yeah. You bring it to life. You take those lines, you bring them in through your eyes, you run them through your soul. A part of your own spirit becomes part of it. Your experiences help inform the experiences of them. And you have to say them as if you're actually there in the moment that you are that character. The lines have to feel spontaneous. Otherwise, it's might as well just be sitting there reading a book to you. You don't want that. You want me to feel that those are my words, my lines. I'm, I'm I'm very committed to them. And, and I mean that I, I, there may be games that you guys have played. I know you've seen the, the memes online. You've seen the videos where people have shown you bad video game voice acting, where it's somebody who just gets a script and reads the lines as they are coming through. And it's like, Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. who did you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. How did you get this job? Yeah. 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 Interesting. So it's, it's like you're coloring within the, the coloring book. You're, you know. Oh, it's it. Yeah. But the thing is, it's, uh, yeah, there are the lines and you're coloring it in. But if you've ever seen good painting mm -hmm. uh, or let's say, let's say, look at uh, inks. Let's look at the way comic books are done where you've got somebody who pencils mm -hmm. and then somebody comes through and they are equally an artist who does the inks. Right. And they interpret those pencils with their own inks. The colorist then comes in and adds layers and dimension and life to it. And so, yeah, there was a skeletal form that began this and the ideas are all there and the story is there. But if you don't have somebody who brings their own interpretation, their own life to each level of building that thing, it's not going to seem real. Everything you've ever done, like in movies, when you're watching a movie, and you see somebody uh, living that if you buy into it, and you believe that they're going through it and they're experiencing it and they're really feeling f pain or fear or love, then they've done their job at bringing it to life. But if you're reading it on a piece of paper, it's a very different experience. You guys have read novels, correct, where you're sitting back and you're reading a book. And in your mind, you can hear all the voices, can you not? You right. can see yeah. the entire world. As an actor, you have to go there to that place and interpret it, see it in your mind, feel it in your soul and bring it out as if it's actually happening, if it's actually real. If you don't believe it, nobody else will. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Um, and the way you, I mean, you almost even said, like, when the character says the line, it has to ring as if it's the first time the character said the line. Yeah, because it is absolutely it is. you may have said it yeah. a dozen times practicing the line, but the character has to come across like it was spontaneous and they were in the moment and they were feeling it, not like it's rote. Right. Which is why sometimes if you say something that sounds a little more natural, a word may change here or there. But if the feeling is definitely there, they're like, you know what, I'll take that. I'll buy that. I, 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 I th that worked for me. You know, or they may just ask you to come back and give it to them one more time and get the lines exactly right. Or if you have an idea, they've never stopped me when I've had ideas before. And uh, you can throw it in there, but you never know what happens in the editing room. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Now, you um, you you teach a lot of this. I know you have a course that you've done. Uh, Ken signed up for your course and he had a blast yeah. doing it. Ken, um, Ken signed up, came and took the class twice. Oh, really? Um, yeah. And, and he was he was wonderful both times. Ken's got a, such a wonderful, soothing voice and could read the phone book and make you be like, that was a wonderful phone book. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, his his voice, voice is like strangely relaxing. Like it, is. it really is. It's just like, oh, this is just comforting. <laughs> if he were the one who is reading those uh, descriptions on the uh, TV uh, uh, medicine ads, you know, <laughs> may cause permanent erectile dysfunction and like, death. It's You'd like, be like, oh, okay, fine. I mean, whatever. I'm cool with it's that. Bad, all that permanent <laughs> damage. <be. laughs> yeah, but I, I, yeah, it's uh, the class. I do it through uh, Theater Lab DC, and it's online. And what's cool about it is I've had people from all over the world take it. So we've got some folks who are on the East Coast, some are on the West Coast, some are in Australia, some in Germany, some in England, and we all become squad. We all, in fact, there's a whole uh, Discord group of, of former students who get together and share auditions and share uh, stories with each other and help each other move forward. You know, so which I think is wonderful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I've I've dabbled a little bit in voice acting before I got mostly into podcasting, um, and I understand how hard it is to break in. One of the newest shows on our network is a hola a halo hola halo um, story 
like dramatic reenactment kind of podcast where they have voice actors yeah. and things like that. And they're th- 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 what they do. And I just learned this yesterday because they just signed up. What they do is they hire only new voice actors because they want to give people a chance to actually get experience and, and get into the industry. And I think it's great. It's amazing. Listen, mods also are wonderful in that it gives people a chance to one uh, work as developers. I think the modders of today are going to be the developers of tomorrow doing the professional games. That being said, uh, I'm not allowed to voice mods because I do the actual games and I'm a union actor and I'm not allowed to do the mods, but it's a great opportunity for people to break in on a mm-hmm. ground level to get actual experience doing it. And, and it really changes things when you voice something and then get a chance to play the game and hear how the, 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 the your, your voice works as integrated and becomes immersive in the game. That will change the way you deliver lines. The way that worked for me with Morrowind changed the way I delivered things for Oblivion. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so on. I mean, I, I put it in in like 500 hours in Morrowind to the point where I would go to sleep and I'd dream I was being attacked by cliff racers. So, <laughs> right. <know. laughs> yeah. Yeah. I believe it. Um, yeah. See, hearing your hearing your stuff in context is very important. It's one of those. There's a lot of shows that sign up on the network and I give them a lot of advice. We, we talk every week, probably very similarly to what you do with your, your uh, program. And one mm-hmm. of the things I tell them is record your your podcast, but especially when you're launching a new show, but then put it on your phone and go listen to it in the car where you normally listen to podcasts because now you're getting in the mindset of how you normally hear it and also, you're going to you hear your own hear your own voice. Exactly. And yeah. you're going to hear your own voice in a different context than just in the nice headphones you have in front of your. Oh, it's you not know. even your headphones. Your skull is the best sound system ever. You're hearing from the inside, the outside, the reverberations, the whole thing. And then you hear your voice and, you know, flat out mono with none of that there. And you're like, who's that? Who's yeah, that guy? That me. voice is terrible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it takes it takes getting used to. But even the delivery of it, even, mm-hmm. you know, on a podcast, you have to understand enunciate so people can understand what you're saying because they're driving in a loud car you know (laughs) right yeah all of that stuff so absolutely it's very very similar now you mentioned playing Morrowind for like 500 hours I know you're as much a fan of these games as we are even though you're in them um, mm-hmm. And we're getting close to the end of the show, so we're going to have to wrap this up soon. But oh no! But <laughs> if if we can if we can play like make believe game designer here, we know Elder Scrolls Six is in pre production. There's stuff around the corner. Well, you and I, none of us know what's going to be in it. If you could envision some wacky scenario for somebody like Sheo Gorath in the next game, knowing like in from the inside what he's like. What would now, you, you know, I've been with? back playing Sheo in both uh, Legends and in uh, Blades. So that so was, I've been back doing that. Uh, what, the Legends one was the one I actually wanted to make reference to just before we had scooted by that. Because yeah. I, Legends, it, it's weird because it was, you know, an offshoot of the series. It wasn't a numbered entry. It, it was sure. A, phone th- and uh, you know i make no bones about the fact that i had you're talking about blades or are you talking about legends the card game the card, well, the card game. game's so on phone I had too to learn yeah, how to play card games period because i've never <laughs> played magic or anything like that you've got to know when to fold them and know when to hold them yeah i would it took me a long time to learn Lies. when to fold them Lies. Um, but one of the things that i i specifically loved about blades was the shivering isles expansion there because it got I felt like you actually got to portray a lot more of the, that story was dark, like, Mm, like substantially more emphasis on the kind of like twisted version of his thought patterns, as opposed to the more jovial, memey, jokey version that like a lot of people have latched onto in the main entries. But like, I, I, was there a specific reason why that was darker than some of the other ones? Because I feel like they was mostly a lot of it was the arena. And you have okay. battling and you have death and yep. there's carnage left and right. And he's reveling in that. Yep. So, <laughs> you know, that's going to make it darker to begin with. Yeah. Uh, I, and I love the fact that I took myself out once a month as the arena announcer. I had uh, yes. Shea Gorth come in and take me out 
little Wes on Wes violence every month before <laughs> Shea Gorath took over. Yeah, I love that the first time I went into the arena event. And I was like, wait, <laughs> what? That's that's crazy. Um, but yeah, that, that was just one that I particularly really thought added a lot to the character because it focused more on the... Uh, I, I make reference to it a lot on different shows where, uh, when we make references to, uh, to books in the series. It's yeah. the... Um, the 16 accounts of madness. And that shows a little more of the <laughs> calculating, you know, darker side to Shea Gorath that is always kind of hinted at and not as front and center oftentimes. Whereas I feel that legend specifically, that storyline was screwing with, I, I forget the name of the character that he's particularly messing with, but <laughs> that is, yeah, that definitely. He's I, not I nearly like. as cuddly as you'd like to think, Lotus. Not nearly as cuddly. <laughs> not nearly. <laughs> no, I, I love that. And uh, I love doing Shea Gorath and I'm very close to it. And who knows? I would love to be back. Uh, I always joke with the guys over there. I always say, hey, here's what we do. We, uh, we, we go to the Shivering Isles. Uh, we stand there. They bring in the guy from uh, ESO. Shea Gorth is like, you shouldn't have done, done that. Ta -ta. <laughs> and boom, off he goes over Suicide Hill. That would be, that's my dream scenario. But who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lotus was mentioning the 16 Accords of Madness. I think it like like him picking on the other Daedric Princes would be an amazing thing to actually witness in Elder Scrolls 6. Well, I mean, there are other Daedric Princes we, that uh, are probably really angry. I mean, you talked about how Hermaeus Mora doesn't get the due. Well, you know, that's because Shea Gorth has a much better PR representative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Well, especially because in the 16 accounts of madness, like filling out some of those stories, you know, other princes kind of get one upped, which explains some of the fear originally with the whole jigglelag thing with that being a split, like jigglelag's that... way too anal. I mean, he's yeah, like way as too. vicious. <laughs> he's as vicious and nasty as Shea Gorath is underneath of all the fun stuff. Yeah, exactly. But there's no leeway, no sense of humor. Right. You know, and <laughs> and when you get that levity kind of mixed in, I feel like it it sets the other it sets anyone kind of like less on edge. You're less defensive against that. And it's situations where a lot of time uh, the, there's the one with here scene. Uh, they have like the the basically the battle of like what can they come up with that's the most terrifying creature and he's got this where daedra thing and shira Gorath gets like a little hummingbird and then it's up like a little like tiny bird on his snoot until the thing tears itself apart and i was like mm -hmm. okay like that was the most casual way of letting somebody get and in you their own why? head <laughs> it's it's more fun that way <laughs> exactly <laughs> right, and it's like right. that levity ends up screwing with somebody who's too focused right and right it, it provides an advantage that you wouldn't really account for. Some people have been talking, I mean, here's a question and uh, I'll let you guys answer this because I don't know the answer to this, but somebody told me they feel that since uh, the, the uh, hero of Kavach yeah. evidently has mantled into Shea Gorath, Right. Does yes. that mean that Shea Gorath and Jigalag are now two separate entities? Or that's, no? That's a great question. And the Shea yes. Gorath. And I don't know. That I, we, I can't wait. I can't wait to see. Yeah. The Shea Gorath that we meet in Skyrim is fundamentally a different Shea Gorath than the one we meet in Oblivion right. because mm -hmm. of the mantling. So how that actually works in the long run, we're just going to have to wait and find out. I mean, that's what the cool thing is about these games is that you play these things and you play with the lore and you guys are into the lore, but you can have so many different interpretations. And you know yes. what? A lot of them seem just as legitimate as any of the others. That's why it's cool to talk about it. That's why we could all sit around, get ourselves coffee, maybe splash it with a little something, if you know what I mean. And we sit around and we chat well <laughs> into the night longer than you guys actually have this evening about all the different lore possibilities and and the way things go with these characters i mean i just think it's fun yes yes well we're gonna have to wrap this up because i know i know you've got a hundred no! other things to get to no! do i'm sorry shea gorth we have to send you back um but thanks for thanks for coming on thanks for bringing your cup of captain joe or whatever it is you're drinking and oh, uh it's just the coffee tonight my friend just a it's joe <laughs> Uh, just uh, want to remind folks to go to voiceapalooza.com and check out all the great events coming up in the next week. I hope that you guys are there and I hope that you can hey, drop in a buck if you can, whatever little bit you can to uh, donate to the Alzheimer's Association. I would greatly appreciate it.
I do. I think there's something rather ironic with Shea Goreth trying to end dementia. <laughs> <laughs> do it for Uncle Shea. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Wes, for joining us. Lotus, um, everybody knows what we do. We don't need to do a big wrap up yeah, this time. I, the only thing I'll do just to pee back off, Wes. Um, so hi. To, what? to what's that? I heard a, I heard golden showers from Tom and on his pee back from you. What are we talking about here? <laughs> Look, it, it's after dark. Shit's getting weird. This episode <laughs> is rated E for explicit. <laughs> um with High Isle dropping on console um, on the 21st and Voice of Palooza going on, my portion of contributing uh, to Wes's efforts here, that will be my day one stream provided. DSL. All right. Like, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll be up and running. Uh, I have an alternative if, if server maintenance is a thing. But um, yeah, anybody who is interested in that, check out um, me going live in honor of the longest day as well. And that'll be the 21st at 5 p.m. on uh, on this coming Tuesday, the 21st. Awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Make sure you put that on. Uh, make sure you put that out on Twitter because I want to retweet that. To I will. Folks I'll, I'll and I want everybody to go. No yeah, there's so much. And, and where can people see this later? I mean, you can watch all of these things at a later date. Can you not? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your what channel? Lotus. Oh, it, it's going to be on Lotus of Doom, like uh, the uh, Lotus of Doom Twitch my, channel. Yeah, it'll just be Lotus of Doom. All the links will be there. It'll all be going to the the, the charity that Wes has been. So I don't know. I, I was very touched that this was running because a lot of what I do is for charity as well, as people know. And um, I've I've lost several family members to Alzheimer's and dementia. So like yeah. being able to lend a hand to help raise money for this cause is really, really fantastic, especially coming from, you know, pe people that I already enjoy what they make. So then to have it get linked in with something that I really, you know, would love to help with is just, you know, like you said, it, it really brings a light to gaming that a lot of people don't tend to see where it's like, Oh yeah, they're just wasting their time or whatever. And it's like, no. not necessarily there's there's more to it yeah we're going to be dropping the gloves on alzheimer's and people are going to be saying beware here comes the lotus of doom <laughs> okay i need that sound clip <laughs> <laughs> i can export that for you don't worry um Appreciate that <laughs> well thank you so much and lotus i hope that goes really well and you can find me again tomorrow if you're into fallout stuff and want to see more of wes yeah and ken and a bunch of voice actors there's a whole cast of people it's going to be awesome We'll be doing that again tomorrow at 5 p.m. on Friday. And um, you guys know how to find my stuff and all the other shows on the network, robotsradio.net. And that's you rock, it. Tom. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Wes. And thank you, Lotus. All right, chat. Thank you for being here as well. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Stay safe. Talk, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach me on Twitter at robots underscore radio or Lotus of Doom at Lotus of Doom. Also, you can join us on the Robots Radio Discord channel. You can easily just search Robots Radio Discord on Google or check the description underneath the podcast. Also, this podcast is recorded live every week on Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on the Robots Radio channels on Twitch, YouTube, and on Facebook. So just search Robots Radio on any of those platforms come join us we'd love to chat with you while we record the show or before or after either way just come hang out with us and if you're looking for more information about my shows and the shows on the robots radio network go to robotsradio.net for all the information about all the shows on the network including the robots radio rocket club where i help both new and existing podcasters to grow their shows build their audiences and create the best podcasts they possibly can all of that at robotsradio.net we'll see you next time